Hey everybody, it's me, your old pal Dan Classic, and we're back at it again with another episode. So which stupid Mego figure is it this week? For your information, Jess, this week we're not looking at Mego figures. Awesome. Although they are clothed figures from the 1970s, so it's pretty much the same shit. What's with all the clothed figure stuff, Gorilla? Just call them what they are. Dolls. Did somebody say dollies? <laughs> oh, I know it was you. Why don't you put on a frilly little dress so you can host a tea party for your dollies? <laughs> dollies! <laughs> so, which dollies are you looking at today, hmm? I hope you brought a comb so you can brush their hair. <laughs> dollies! <laughs> are you done? This will never be over, capitalist pig dog manchild. Hook tui. You know what? Fuck you guys. This week we're reviewing Mork and Mindy by Mattel. Raz Holly, hit the music. Never hear it on the radio. Never hear it on a TV show. In 1978, an episode of Happy Days aired called My Favorite Orchid. In the episode, an alien comes to Earth and attempts to take Richie Cunningham away for study. Of course, Richie protests. The Fonz gets involved in an epic showdown between the Fonz and a fucking alien ensues in which the Fonz uses, get this, the power of his goddamn thumb to fight the alien. It all ends up being a dream or was it? Jeez, and they talk about that shark episode being stupid. Anyway, the episode was extremely popular, so much so that the syndicated version was retconned so that the events of the episode were not a dream and actually occurred in the canon of the show. Why would they need to do that? Well, because that alien, Mork, played by Robin Williams, a relative unknown at the time, was getting his own TV show. Mork and Mindy, set in Boulder, Colorado, not Denver, not Colorado Springs, not Shitty Pueblo, not might as well be Utah Grand Junction, nope, Boulder. The house used for the exterior shots and in the opening is actually fucking Boulder. I mean, it could have been anywhere. They shot the goddamn thing in LA, but I digress. The show was about Mork, obviously, an alien from a planet called Ork who came to Earth to study humanity. He lives with Mindy, a human who befriends Mork and teaches him the ways of Earth, and later teaches him some other stuff, if you know what I mean. Don't get mad at me, I don't write this shit. They got married in the fourth season, so you know what happened. That's gross, Gorilla. Anyway, the show was super popular. Well, at least the first season was. And you can blame that on the late, great Robin Williams. Look, I just explained the concept of the show to you. It's stupid as fuck. The only way this works is with one of the most talented performers to ever exist. And believe me, he was. ABC couldn't leave well enough alone though, and fucked and fiddled with the format and the characters and everything else surrounding the show. This of course led to a decline in ratings from which the series would never recover, being cancelled after the fourth season. Thanks ABC. In 1978, at the height of Morkamania, Mattel grabbed the license to make Mork and Mindy figures. By the time 1979 rolled around, thanks to ABC's meddling, the show's ratings were already in decline and the figure line would be relatively small. Don't you mean dollies, you overgrown baby girl? <laughs> dollies! <laughs> 
Anyway, let's take a look at some dolls. I mean, action figures. <laughs> All right, Nanu, Nanu, motherfuckers. Um, here he is. It's Mork from Ork. Um, and he is three and three quarter inches tall. Um, I will bring in another figure here for, uh, for size comparison, but for now, um, we're just taking a look at Robin Williams as Mork. Um, he is three and three quarter inches again. And are you surprised that I thought this was a fucking Mego when I originally kind of saw him? Cause you gotta understand I wasn't around when these things came out. Um, I wasn't I wasn't getting fucking toys and shit. I am familiar with Mork and Mindy because of syndication and uh, you know growing up it was on TV all the time but in reruns mostly. Um, this is yeah and which is how I'm familiar with it. Now um, the figure his fucking face doesn't have any goddamn uh, detail on it and I would be more upset with Mattel about this if Mego hadn't already fucking done this with all their three and three quarter inch figures. A lot of old three and three quarter inch figures. Um, Ideal, Mego, uh, fucking goddamn name them, did this. I don't know why. It's like, oh, we don't know. It costs too much money because this is Boss Hog. It's like, what the? Why? They look like some fucking monster from goddamn Doctor Who. But anyway. He's got his jumpsuit uh, from the show uh, with the little triangle, and it's kind of cool because he, he is compatible with other three and three quarter inch figures like your um, dog shit Star Wars figures and uh, G.I. Joe. So that's pretty much it for the three and three quarter inch, you know, fucking five points of articulation. Who gives a shit? He's, um, you can put him in your pocket, take him with you. Nanu, nanu. All right, so I do have Mork and Mindy, but let's start with Mindy, um, because this is a little less interesting than Mork. She doesn't really have any action features or anything like that, but here's her box, which is, spoilers, in better, in better shape than my Mork box, but uh, she actually wasn't very expensive to find. Um, you can still find these, even though they're from 1979. You can find them kind of out on eBay, on the, on the internet, and you can find them complete in box like she is here. Um, she is, says right here on the box, Pam Dauber as Mindy, so we're not fucking screwing around. We got the, the rights to use people's likenesses, Migo, and, uh, <laughs> and you know what it looks like her, at least from the outside of the box, it does look like Pam Dauber. It's a very nice looking figure. Um, we'll look at what Mattel does with their figures. These are nine inch as opposed to eight inch. They're a little bit bigger than Migos, which just kind of stinks because you'd like them to all be sort of in the same scale. On the back, you have a illustration of what the doll looks like. Uh, favorite earthling and very best friend of TV's lovable Mork, nine inches tall, Posable. Um, she's a little bit more than his best friend because they do eventually get married and you know they were fucking. Um, we have the list of the other things, the cross sell. We have the plush doll Mork. Uh, I almost got one of these, but then I figured, no, I'm not buying a fucking plush from that's been God knows where and had rats pissing on it for 45 fucking years. Uh, no, I'm, I'm not. I'm not bringing that into my home. Um, we have Mork from Mork. He came in a little egg. The three and three quarter inch figures are harder to find, more expensive than the fucking nine inch figures. Figure that shit out. And then of course we have Mork with his uh, little backpack because he talks. And we're about to see that here in a second. And there's also a orc egg. It contains orc goo, which I guess is slime, and an orc creature for ages over five. Um, Parents, please note these toys are suitable for children of different ages. Please check the package before you buy. Each sold separately. Well, no shit! No shit that not every single one of these goddamn things is in this this little box um, with, uh, with Mindy in it. So let's take a look and see what fucking, um, what she looks like outside of the box. Oh my god. Oh my god. Even in 1979, twist ties. <sighs> a fucking scourge. A scourge on our nation. Um, I don't know if this is the first uh, time I've seen twist ties in packaging. Um, going back to the, 1979, 40, 41 years ago. To 
depending on when you're watching this. And there it is. Get this fucking horse shit out of here. Um, let's get clear out the trash and see what Mindy looks like outside of the box. Ladies and gentlemen, Pam Dauber as Mindy. Uh, Mindy, whatever the fuck her last name. Uh, Mindy fucking Mork. I guess she marries him, like I said. Um, got a nasty old rubber band in her hair from fucking 41 years ago. I'm not touching it. Um, this nylon hair, when it gets old, it gets fucking really gross and really matted. So best not to, to fool with it or touch it. Um, my, my Migo Conan kind of has the same problem. Um, it just eventually, dude, I mean, this like is garbage in it. It's just nasty um it sucks it's just kind of just like they didn't know they, they didn't fucking know that you know 40 years later that they're fucking idiots fucking looking at these things going look at this hair it's all shitty um but let's take a look at her posability we got the knees we got the elbows oh was she a bendy whoa she's all rubbery like okay she has like the shoulder articulation but then her arms are all it's not a bendy but it's very rubbery. Um, but what I'm most impressed with this figure is the face. Look at this fucking likeness. This is a great likeness of Pam Dauber. This is a great likeness of the character Mindy from the show Mork and Mindy. She has real clothes, she has a little sweater. Um, it's very nice. She has little elastic jeans, I guess, and some uh, shoes. The, the shoes are, are glued on, but they come off. So I don't know why they glued them on. Um, but yeah, it's pretty simple. I mean, it's kind of like if you're gonna make Mork and Mindy figures, I guess you gotta make Mindy. And it's fine. It's fine to have this if you're, a, I guess if you're a fan of the show, um, which is a very niche audience at this point in time, if you're a huge Mork and Mindy fan, then you gotta have these. This wouldn't look like the worst thing in the world up on a shelf. It's kind of a cool doll um, to have. It's a little piece of history, but there it is. It's Mindy. Okay, so remember when I said that this box wasn't in good shape? It's not. It's fucking in terrible, terrible shape. Um, but it does have the, the big logo, has uh, pictured Robin Williams and Pam Dauber as Mork and Mindy. It says Robin Williams as Mork. Uh, Mork and Mindy pull my talking ring. He does have a, a talking feature. It comes in this giant fucking backpack that is uh, actually packaged at the top of the box. He is packaged at the bottom and upside down. We have an illustrated uh, Mindy saying, Mork, why are you standing on your head? And uh, Mork replies with, uh, shit, no, it's uh, Shazbot. Uh, popular TV comedy star, hear Nano Nano and uh, seven other crazy things when you pull the talking ring. Nine inches tall, poseable. Uh, by Mattel. Uh, we've got some copyright. Copyright 1979 Paramount Pictures Corporation. All rights reserved. Trademark designates trademarks of Paramount Pictures. Who gives a shit? Lots of fucking legal mumble jumbo, but they fit it all in an orange line right down the side of the box. Um, or as we turn the box over to the back, we have the cross cell that we had on the Mindy box. We have the uh, the a couple of photos from the, the 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 series. We have fucking Mindy in a very uh, seductive looking outfit here. Uh, it must be a Halloween episode or something. Maybe I don't know. Um, and then we've got uh, the uh, Robin Williams as Mork in the same shit that it said on the front, except there's an illustrated picture of the figure. So we're gonna find out what it looks like on the inside. But first, let's see if the shit still works. Here we go. Um. Okay, I, I don't think it works anymore. I mean, I mean, technically it, it's moving and there's noise coming out of it, but I, I don't understand what the fuck that was supposed to be. So let's open this up and see what it looks like outside of the box. Oh, and here we go again. 1979 twist ties. At least this is a simple twist and pull fucking situation, but 
All right, let, I'm gonna finish opening this fucking box. Okay, so here he is, Mork from Mork, out of the box and uh, on a stand. I think he stands pretty well, but he's got very bad fucking posture. Um, his head is is like is like pushed down, and that might be from sitting upside down in a fucking box for 40 years. Um, that might be the case. Also, his uh, his boots. Let's take a look at his fucking boots. They're disgusting. Um, because the back of the box is open, of course, because it came with this ridiculous fucking feature. But let's not look at that right now. Let's look, look at the look, figure. His jumpsuit's very nice. It's 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 like kind of a nice sort of stretchy material. He's got the little triangle. It's sewn on. His little uh, Star Trek looking rank on there, there, and on the back it snaps together. You can change his fucking clothes if guess if you felt like it um i don't know if they sold like a, like the fucking rainbow suspenders outfit or whatever um back in the day but i guess i guess you could you could you could put different clothes on him good good luck finding fucking clothes for a nine inch goddamn mattel doll but anyway um would have been nice had these been eight inch figures had they been compatible with our with our Mego friends, um, that we could recreate the the Fonzie versus fucking Mork scene from from Happy Days, um, but yeah, he's really nice looking. Um, this is kind of what if you're a collector, this is what you want. Um, you're probably just gonna get this, um, and he also comes with. I'm gonna put this back on the shit here. Pardon me a moment. Comes with this red thing. On the back of the box, it shows all these fun graphics all over it. Okay, this is a backpack, I guess. You're supposed to strap it to him, and that's probably why he's leaned over a little bit, so that he can he can stand up and have this on him. It has a little antenna, and of course, we've heard before how this how well this works. Um all right, and uh, and so there you go. Um and, and then I found in the box. A sticker sheet! Um, so... I bought this thing, right? So let's let's go back to 1979. I fucking buy this thing, I spend my hard-earned money on it, or a child spends their allowance on it. They're like, oh, I want Mork for Mork! Or they, they give it to him on Christmas, so here you go. It's a fucking Mork doll, and, um... Here you go, it's a fucking chore! Like, now you have to fucking customize your own fucking shitty action figure. What am I supposed to do? Like, dude, like, I, I know, like, some of you are thinking, like, oh, wow, you're fucking, you know, you're, you're overreacting to this. Like, no, I shouldn't have to pay to, to fucking finish making the goddamn action figure. It should be done when I fucking buy it. And if, like, w between the fucking packaging and the twist ties and the horse shit and the fucking box being open and these dirty ass fucking boots, it's like, what the fuck? Even in 1979, um, Mattel was was fucking over the customer, and you know what? Fuck you, Mattel. Fuck you retroactively to 1979. The fucking like he looks stupid with this big backpack thing on. It's not like he wore a big fucking red metal fucking air conditioner on his goddamn back in the show. Like I, I understand that you wanted to give him the talking feature, but you know what? The the technology wasn't outside of the realm of possibility to put it inside the fucking doll. Even then! So, 1979 uh, fucking Mork doll. Looks cool on the shelf. Otherwise, fucking there are some problems. And now I gotta figure out something to do with this. Well, that's it for Mork and Mindy by Mattel. What did you think of these figures? Let us know down in the comments. Well, at least they weren't Mego. But they were still dollies. <laughs> dollies. <laughs> Hit the music!
Duke? Dang. 